Hello everyone, good afternoon. My name is Armand DeLeon. So my presentation is going to be about Dr. Sebi case is a powerful narrative. Um, in this speech, you know, I could have choose any other topic, but it was something particularly that caught my attention. Also because they're going to release a documentary of him about this case that made him go viral. And I'm going to get to that in a bit. But this is Dr. Sebi, as you can see in the screen. Uh, he is an African-American, but he was born in Honduras. In this picture, well, he was 82 years old, but he, he wasn't 82 years old in this picture. A um, little bit about him. He's a herbalist. He's a non-doctor. Um, he is the man, the man who cured AIDS. The man who he proclaimed that he cured AIDS, leukemias, cancer, um, herpes, um, Dr. Sebi himself claims that he finds cures for several life-threatening diseases with his natural herbs. All his products are made with natural herbs, natural products from the world. Um, he's a Honduras herbalist, self-proclaimed healer, and also he impacted, uh, he impacted a lot of people's lives. More than a thousand people have came to him. He had more than a thousand patients that were cured with different diagnosed diseases. What made him more famous is that he actually cured famous people. Some of the um, top people he cured was Michael Jackson. He made Jack, uh, Michael Jackson get off painkillers. He cured Lisa, Lisa left eye. So what made her famous in her um, rap in, uh, in her music industry is that she had an issue and she had a disease during her left eye. So after hearing, you know, Dr. Seven, she reached out to him, went to Honduras, stood there for 30 to 40 days for treatment. Dr. Sebi himself was able to cure her and cure her eye. She stated that he really opened my eyes. Now with the treatment that Dr. Sebi provided him and Michael, her and Michael Jackson, they were both cured with their treatment. Both of them was able to, you know, get cured. Also, he also cured Eddie Murphy. Some of you guys may know who is Eddie Murphy. He's a comedian. He's an, um, he had this, he was diagnosed with this disease, but it was so private that Dr. Sebi himself didn't say it. Um, he actually cured his mother as well because she was diagnosed with another disease. But also, they, he didn't want to release that private information. Now, this is Dr. Sebi and this is Lisa. This was during the um, time where she was in Honduras, you know, getting healed. Right here in the bottom is Michael Jackson. And in the back, I don't know if you can see, but in the back of Michael Jackson is Dr. Sebi. Uh, they had a really great connection, especially after the heal that that um, Dr. Sebi did for him. Now, what makes it more interesting about this topic, particularly for me, is that about him. What makes him special what make, makes him stand out the most is that he is a, a non-doctor he's a herbalist he has no degree for being a doctor but what makes him makes him different is that he actually found a cure he found a cure for AIDS he was able to cure more than seven pa more than 13 patients who had cures who was diagnosed with, with AIDS and he was able to cure them also with cancer leukemia uh, in the year of 1983, he was, um, Dr. Sebi was sued by the New York attorney and he was taken to court. Why? Because a lot of people thought that it was false advertisements because he, he announced that he cured AIDS and people would think that that's impossible because there's no cure for AIDS. It's a treatment, but with his natural herbs and products, he was able to, to heal that, um, in 1982, there was about 2,750 cases in the Supreme Court, and Dr. Sebi won. Why? Because he actually brought evidence 
The attorney told him to bring nine patients, nine patients who he had personally um, cured. But instead, instead he wanted to make it big. What Dr. Sebi did is that Dr. Sebi brought more around 77 patients who were diagnosed with cancer, diagnosed with leukemia, different type of cancers, who had mental disorders, who had AIDS. He brought all those to the um to the court to testify that he actually cured them. He brought medical, um, yeah, medical paper and make them uh, medical documents that he actually you know cured them with his natural products. You know, but what also would that made him um makes this you know topic mysterious like he passed away now the way he was passed away was in honduras where he was naturally from originally from he he died in the custody of police so he was taken to jail but he actually died for having a disease no he had phonemia phonemia but he actually died under the custody of, of police Dr. Sevi was so healthy. Um, he had no issues except that he had diabetes, but he was actually able to be cured by going to Mexico to talk uh, to talk to another herbalist that was that helped him be cured and gave him information and tips. You know, and they worked together, and that's how you know Dr. Sevi went on to his journey. You know, to discover more types of cures and different herbs. You know, in the beginning of my speech, you know, I, I talked about who Dr. Sevi was and how he started and ended his journey, you know, healing people with, with his herbs. Um, if it weren't for his, uh, I believe if, if it weren't for a corrupted government, judgment, racism, or hate, I feel like the herbalist Dr. Sevi could have made a big impact on people's lives. Why? Because I feel like there's been an increase every year of people diagnosed with cancer. And cancer is a big thing, also with AIDS. And, you know, there's there's actually been proof where he actually cured them. And if he was still alive and then people would give him an opportunity to show his work, I feel like he could have made a big major impact on people's lives. Because a lot of people lose their families because of these type of diseases. Um... You know, Dr. Sebi stated that if herbs are from healing of the nations, you know, that that statement comes from, from the Bible. And he believes that there's no, there's no other way to heal people but with herbs. And that's what makes him make his work, you know, stand out the most. And there's been a lot of conspiracy theories that... Uh, why he died but they were going to make a documentary about him and the reason how i was exposed to dr sebi was by nipsey hustle you know as you can see in the picture in the breakfast club dr sebi was brought to that interview they were you know talking about his um, debut album and the people who, who who was interviewing him asked him what made you go after that? And what the, um, Nipsey Hussle said that. Why did they kill him? Why did he end up this way, losing his life, or after announcing that he you know, he was able to carry? Now that now that's a trip. That's what he stated, and he stated that there's some um, you know. There's a. There's a lot of you know theories of why he died. And the reasons why, and he wants to, you know, he wants to know the truth. So he was gonna make a documentary about it. But as you guys know, um, you know, Nipsey Hussle passed away uh, around two years ago. So he wasn't able to finish that. But now, Nin Canyon, as you guys know, he's another comedian, um, another artist. So he's taking on the journey of making this doc, finishing out the documentary that Nipsey Hussle left off, and. He's ready to, you know, in that document, he's ready to express everything about who Dr. Sebi was, well, how did Dr. Sebi die, and he's actually going to his island where he was originally from, you know, to 
to talk about who Dr. Sevi was. And I'm really looking forward to for this documentary. And the documentary, the name is called Strong Enemies. Uh, you know, that, that document is going to state everything. It's going to release a lot of, you know, the truth. And a lot, hopefully it goes viral. And I'm really looking forward to it. But this was the topic. And it was about Dr. Sebi.